Brian Dolesky with Able Distributors. Today, we're diving deeper into sizing ductwork for a home. I've got a couple other videos on this. One is using manual D. I'll link that video below. The other is size, simple sizing ductwork with the furnace on one end of the house and all the ductwork going in, in one direction. This video, and I've had a lot of people asking about it, was if the furnace is in the middle of the house, how do I go about sizing the ductwork and laying it out? So again, simple, I'm just gonna use the point one, the residential setting on a ductulator. So that's the simple part of this. If you wanna do the manual D, it's, it's worth the read, get the books, it's interesting. You basically have to start out the same way, even if you're doing manual D, because you have to figure out your longest run supply and return. So what I did here was just to show you how I do it, I just did the supply side of things. And I would do it the same exact way with returns as I'm doing with the supply. So on the blueprint, on the first floor, I'm drawing in where I would like supplies to go. I also draw on the first floor where the furnace is gonna sit in the basement so that I know how many supplies are to the right or the left of that furnace so I can size the ductwork. Now I know that once I get into rough in the house, since I'm just looking at a blueprint, things might change. This supply might be here, it might be here, really doesn't change how I do the duct layout at this point. So let's get into it. So I divided the house in half right above where my furnace is gonna be. So I know to the right, I've got one, two, three first floor supplies, and I've got two on the other side of the stairwell, and I have to figure out how I'm gonna get there. So I just figured I'd take and jump an eight inch to two six inch saddles and hit that. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. So to the right side on the first floor, I've got five first floor supplies. Second floor, I do the same exact thing. I draw the furnace. No, the furnace is not gonna sit on the second floor, but I know that's where it's gonna sit in the basement, just past the stairwell. So now I know on the second floor, I've got one, two, three. Three second floor supply airs. I'm gonna put one in the basement, on this half of the basement. So that gives me a total of nine supplies to the right of that furnace. Now on the first floor, I'll, I'll draw in where I'm hoping to bring these supplies up walls. Again, depending on plumbing, framing, it may not happen, but at least I have some kind of a plan because the house isn't built yet. I'm, I'm quoting this house, I'm sizing this house up before we get there. So I know that I now have nine supplies to this side. Nine supplies, if I use my trusty ductulator, it tells me at 0.1, it's about 110 CFM per opening. That's the max they're capable of. So I have to make sure that that first piece of duct is capable of 990 CFM. 20 by eight is, is more than capable. And off that 20 by eight, I'm gonna pull off an eight with two first floor supplies. So that's one, two. I'm gonna cut one in for the basement, that's three. And then I'm gonna pick up this supply on the first floor, that's four. So I've got one, two, three, four, four off of that. Now we reduce to 16 by eight, because again, I've got four more, so that duct has to be capable of 440 CFM. I've got one coming back to here. I've got two coming forward, one for this, and one for that. Um, I've got another one coming forward for this. And then I reduce the last piece of duct to 10 by eight because essentially all I have is this one. So again, this is a fake house. It doesn't actually exist. It's a fake trunk line. It doesn't actually exist, but this is how I do it. I map out what I'm going to do, where the furnace is going to sit. And again, any of the hard stuff, I just got to know if I'm bringing the pipe this way or if I'm gonna tap off the ductwork here and come around that way because it changes how much ductwork. So you can see that the way this house divided up, I've got seven supplies over here, nine over here. That includes one for the basement here, one for the basement here. I'm assuming the basement's unfinished. That's how we got to 
20 by eight for the 990 CFM coming this way, 16 by eight for the 770 CFM going that way. We reduce, we do tapered reducers. I drew that one square, but it really should be tapered. You wanna, you don't wanna flat cap them on the supply. It makes a difference. It makes a difference how this stuff flows. That's how I get to the point where I know where my furnace is gonna sit and I know what ductwork I'm going in each way. A lot of guys don't start with the plenum. They start with one piece of ductwork. So if I had to do this and I wanted to just hang one piece of ductwork, it gives me a little bit of flexibility when it actually comes time to tie in the furnace. That first piece of duct would have to be a 30 by eight to be able to handle the whole load. And then I would reduce this way and reduce this way. If you just put a plenum up, again, it'd probably be a 20 wide furnace, 20 wide ductwork, 16 wide ductwork. You could cut it right into the plenum. And that's how I lay out a simple duct sizing when the furnace lands in the middle. Again, you've got to take into consideration what you're doing in the basement. Again, this one, I assumed that the basement was going to be unfinished. So I put one there and one there just to temper the basement. Returns, I would do the same thing. I would start drawing returns in. And here, you don't have a lot of walls. This stairwell wall, since it's landing on a beam, I know I can get a couple returns there. There's not a lot of interior walls, and that's the problem nowadays is where do you put returns? So I'm gonna hope that this wall here is doubled and I can stick a return and a return here because I'm assuming that's like a family room. Uh, behind the garage. Getting the returns down is tough. Honestly, a lot of times with open floor plans, putting a second system either in the attic or on the first or the second floor and go up into the attic makes life a lot easier because you don't have to try and get all wool pipe up for each one of the supplies. And we haven't even drawn how to get the returns down from the second floor. So again, maybe my my sample home was a little too simple, but that's it in a nutshell on how I take on the blueprint. I pick my spot for the furnace. I figure out how many supplies left and right I'm going to have. Same thing with the returns. I draw it on there. I figure out all my difficult stuff ahead of time so that when I actually go out to the house, I have a blueprint with everything written on it. A lot of times it just doesn't work out. It just doesn't work out that everything I drew without seeing the house and the way it was built, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Whether that carpenter starts pulling 16 centers off one side or off the other, the joist and the studs are gonna line up differently. Whatever the plumber does is gonna affect me too, but I gotta at least have a plan going in. That's the plan going in. Simple duct sizing, part two. The other parts are linked below. Brian Dolesky, Able Distributors. <laughs>